So reading the Zero Day Initiatives blog, we can actually see a list of all the Microsoft vulnerabilities that were patched. And right at the top is this RPC library remote code execution vulnerability. So I'm going to look at that because A, it's right at the top. B, it has a CVSS score of 9.8. And C, it's in RPC, which is used absolutely everywhere on Windows. So it probably has a really big attack surface. So I'm just going to hop over to the Microsoft blog and see if they have anything else to say about it. So scrolling to the bottom, we can see it actually affects a wide array of systems. We've got Windows 7, Windows 10, and some server systems. So this looks like it could be a good bug. So I pulled the DLLs off of a system before the patch and a system after the patch. You can actually extract these from the patch themselves, but more often than not, it goes wrong for me. So I prefer to do it this way. Sometimes I have to extract the patch to find out what DLLs uh, got changed, but in this case it's the RPC runtime library, which is RC rpcrt4.dll. So I knew the DLL off the top of my head and just pulled that. I'm just pulling both copies of the DLL into IDA so I can generate an IDB, which is used by Bindiff. Now Bindiff is an application that will show you what changes happened between two versions of a file, and it can show these changes at a function level, so it's very, very useful. So what I'm going to do is go to the matched functions tab, which will show functions it detected in both copies of the DLL. And then it's going to show me the similarity between them. So I list the similarity in descending order. And then I start with the most similar because typically vulnerability patches are going to be a couple of lines of code change. So it's not going to be a huge difference between function A and function B. So I don't really have a method for this. Usually just off the top of your head from experience, you will know uh, what function sounds like it has a vulnerability in it. But if not, you can just go through them one by one and just evaluate the changes. Now the first couple of functions didn't really have any interesting changes. So I just kept clicking through and eventually I found this one. I like to start with the gray blocks because that means code that has been added and typically patches add new lines of code. So that's always a good place to start. Now, ulong add is a Microsoft function that basically adds together two integers in a way that detects an integer overflow. And integer overflows are one of the biggest cause of vulnerabilities these days on Microsoft uh, platforms. So this is a good place to start because this means they are trying to patch an integer overflow. I also found a similar change in another function. So we're gonna focus on these two. So what I'm gonna do next is open the new and old DLL in IDA and then I'm gonna go to the function in both and compare them side by side in the C pseudo code mode. I personally choose mostly to work in the pseudo code mode because the C just makes the lines so much shorter and you don't have to scroll as much as with assembly, which is much longer code. So I will typically do C mode unless something actually makes me need to use assembly. So here I just scroll through uh, comparing line by line until I get to the line where the changes are. I believe in Ghidra you can actually do the bin diff in C mode which is a lot more helpful but my understanding is bin diff doesn't have that capability. So after a bit of scrolling we're at where the change is made. It's just after a function called put on Q. Uh, so that's where we're going to be looking to reach within the code in order to trigger any kind of vulnerabilities. Now there isn't really a shortcut for figuring out how to get to the code in question. Uh, it really varies from application to application and protocol to protocol. So we're kind of lucky here because the function's name is process received PDU. And a PDU is the most basic unit of protocol data. So essentially this function should be being called whenever some data is received. So here I've made a simple Python script to connect to SMB. It's using the IM packet library, which is a library that supports a bunch of different Windows protocols, including SMB. So I'll be connecting to localhost on the pipe spool SS, which is the print spooler and the standard SMB port. Now, uh, for some reason, I had to set the VM username and password here. My understanding of SMB is I should be able to do an anonymous login, but either I'm doing something wrong or this library just doesn't allow it. So I've just put the username and password here, but that should theoretically not be needed. And then this binding I just found online for the print spooler because uh, we need a binding to connect. Then I'm just going to do a call which isn't actually a valid print spooler call. It's just going to have the ID 1337 and send a bunch of A's. And hopefully that will trigger our breakpoint. So now I'm just going to use process hacker to find the process ID of the print spooler. Here we can see it's 6968. And then I should be able to attach IDA to that process and it should detect the DLL and copy our breakpoints across to the DLL in that process. 
Okay, so now we're just gonna switch over to our SMB script and click run and we should hit the breakpoint, which we have. Now the packet is sent in RDX, so let's see if we can find it. And there we go, there's our A's and the protocol header that it was sent with. So now we need to figure out how to get to the line of code within the function where the vulnerability is. Now I wish I had a quick way to do this, but honestly, it's just a lot of reversing. I like to start by um, creating structures for the this pointer, and then I can just go through function by function and slowly figure out what each element in the pointer is. So basically anything that's in the OSF S call class is going to be using the same this pointer. So we can go to a bunch of different functions and see if we can learn more about what element is what. After multiple hours of reverse engineering, I ended up finding out that this flag is required to be set to one in order to hit the code we need. Um, I basically assessed that the flag had something to do with the queue, which is where the vulnerability actually is. So I called it queue enabled. I don't know if that's actually what it is, but it needs to be set. So by defining the this pointer in all the appropriate functions, we can actually do a jump to XRef globally and see where else it's used. So you can see in this function, it's actually where it's set. Now, after a lot of reverse engineering, I actually found out that the pointer is only set based on the server configuration. So the RPC service has to set something in order for that pointer to be enabled. So I ended up using RPC view to just go through basically every RPC endpoint on the system and I couldn't find a single one where it's set. So at this point, I decided not to really contribute more effort into exploiting this bug because it's clear that it needs some kind of weird configuration which is not present on my system out of the box, which to me means that this maybe isn't as serious as it sounded and that it needs a special system with a special configuration in order to exploit. So I'm gonna categorize this bug as something that I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on to see if anyone actually finds an endpoint that's exploitable. But based on the fact that I can't find any on an out of the box system, it means it's probably not likely that this is just some RC where people can just hit whatever and mass exploit systems. 